I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dye a sweater's quantity of yarn and I am both very excited and a little bit nervous uh, because while I have dyed this many skeins at a time before the goal is for these to all be used in one project so I would like there to be some amount of consistency skein to skein and so that is something that I will be thinking about and focusing on during this video. Now I am not dyeing this yarn for myself but for my lab partner Vriseda Boges. Vriseda, thank you so much for being my lab partner today and I am so excited to create this tonal yarn with some very subtle speckles on it. I think it'll be beautiful and I really really hope you're gonna love it. Whenever you are purchasing yarn to have enough to make a whole sweater, uh, you always want to try to buy yarn that is the same dye lot, which means it was dyed in the same batch. That way there's not variation. But by nature, hand dyed yarn does have variation from even within one batch. We've seen things that look very consistent or sometimes things that can be a little more different. Uh, as we go on. And so this is something that is a wonderful feature of hand dyed yarn and something to keep in mind. So while I'm going to do my best for consistency, there will be some variation skein to skein. Today we are going to use Dharma Brilliant Yellow Acid Dye to create our semi-solid tonal base on 600 grams of yarn. This, like its name, is fairly brilliant, uh, so I'm going to use it at a lower depth of shade. Rather than starting at an equivalent of one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn, which would be a 1% depth of shade, I'm actually going to use one-sixth of that. And we're going to measure out one gram of this brilliant yellow dye to use on 600 grams of yarn, which would give us a 0.1666666% depth of shade. One sixth of a percent. We'll just say one sixth of a percent. And I can always add more color and more dye if we decide we want the color to be more intense. but. This, it's always best to start with a little bit less, and I believe this should still give us a really bright, uh, clear yellow. I put on my respirator mask, safety goggles, and gloves, and used a scale to weigh out one gram of the Brilliant Yellow Acid Dye Powder. Then I dissolved this in some hot tap water. The volume that I'm dissolving this in isn't very important because we are going to use a large volume of water on our yarn in a little bit. But I do want to make sure that it is really, really well dissolved because if we add the dye with some clumps in it, then we could end up with one skein having a lot more color than the other. So again, I'm mixing this in a large volume of water, but that total volume isn't very important. For our yarn, I am going to dye 600 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and I have pre-soaked all six skeins overnight in just some plain tap water using this five gallon bucket. And for this yellow base color, we're going to use this five gallon bucket and likely a lot more water. So that way we can get a fairly even amount of color coverage on all six stains at the same time. Alternatively, I could divide this into batches and do two different sets of three in one of my kettles on the stovetop. But the five gallon bucket will allow me to have more water volume and therefore to get more coverage of the dye on the yarn than my 12 quart pot would uh, if I was doing, if I tried to do six skeins in there. And to get more even coverage with this yellow to begin with, we're going to start off with no acid here in our pot. And so by having a large volume of water that is cool and giving the yarn time to soak in there, we should also be able to achieve a more even color coverage. But anyway, that is the plan for our first step. I removed all the yarn from the pre-soak and added some more water. So our bucket is rather full. And now I'm going to take that yellow dye that we mixed and pour it in. 
And then I will use a little bit of water to rinse out our cup. So we have all of the dye in our bucket. And now I'm gonna get a dedicated dye spoon, or rather tongs, to stir this up really well so the dye is well distributed in the pot before we even add our yarn. All right, we have no acid in here yet. My tap water is slightly acidic, but I'm coming in now with my 600 grams of yarn. And I did remove a lot of the pre-soak, but now I am gently dipping these in, raising and lowering them. We could end up with some tonal variation, but yellows typically, and I'm sort of trying to separate these uh, to make sure that we're not giving a lot of resist from just how the skeins are existing, but there's enough water in here that the yarn can float and move through. So as I am dunking it, we're letting this yarn really soak and absorb this color. So again, we could end up with some tonal variation here, but having this much volume uh, with our yarn will help us get more even color coverage. And now, what I'm gonna do is actually let this sit without additional acid for at least an hour. I'm not sure how much of a difference this will necessarily make, as I said, my tap water is slightly acidic, so sometimes things will start striking, uh, even without additional acid, but uh, we're gonna let this sit for at least an hour, and then we will come and add some vinegar, so that way the yarn can absorb the color. Free Seda, I'm very happy with the tone that I see right now. It is sort of bright, but not mega saturated, so the speckles that we add will pop nicely. It might dull the brightness a little bit, but it depends on, I guess, how intense we actually make those speckles. But I am very excited and I love the brightness and yet softness we have here. It has been a little over an hour, and so I'm now going to remove the yarn. And you can see that we definitely have some color in here, but at the same time we do still have, I'm gonna find the zip tie, we do still have more color in the dye bath. That's such a pretty color. I think on camera it's looking more pastel than I feel like it looks in person. But now I am going to add two whole cups of white vinegar into our bucket. And the reason why I am adding it without the yarn in here is so that this is going to allow me to evenly stir and distribute the acid before putting the yarn back in, giving us more even coverage. Again, as I said, some tonal variation is perfectly fine, but since I want to have as much consistency between all of these skeins, this is why I am doing it this way. And raising and lowering the yarn, trying to separate the skeins. Again, there is enough space in here for the yarn to really float and for the dye to have access to a lot of the fiber. Uh, it doesn't look like it's hard because it's a blue bucket. It doesn't look like there's a ton of color left in here, but I do want to leave this overnight outside uh, so we can absorb as much of this color as we can. Let's see. Yeah, I would say uh, right now we have about just like a butter yellow color in our liquid. Most of the dye is already in the yarn. 
before I take it outside, I am going to go ahead and cover it and leave it outside for, I would say, anywhere from anywhere from 18 to 48 hours. Just because since it's warmer outside, that'll help the dye slowly set. We will be steam setting this yarn after we do our speckling on it. So this is just gonna help us get as much of that yellow in there as possible before uh, we get ready to speckle. And since we've got plenty of acid in here, that means we have acid ready to go for our next step. It is now the next morning and ooh, ooh, ooh. sorry for the sunlight, but I am now going to remove the yarn from this bath. However, before we do so, let's take a look. Yeah, this is looking very clear. There's a chance there is a hint of color left here in the yarn or here in the dye dock because there is so much water but I am very well very happy with this yellow color now we do I will remove more water once I have the bucket out of here um, because I do want the yarn to be fairly dry so that way our speckles will be nice and small versus if the yarn is wet then that can give a little more chance for it to spread. So I will gently squeeze out uh, some more liquid probably one at a time by taking the skeins and just sort of wrapping it around my hand and squeezing like so. But now I'm going to rinse out this bucket. If I had another project I was gonna do right now, I could reuse this dye bath. Um, sometimes I reuse dye baths and pre-soaks over and over and over, but uh, today I'm just gonna wash it. I have my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves back on. So we can prepare our acid dye powder for speckling. In each of these three cups, I have about a tablespoon of citric acid powder, and we're gonna mix in some of these colors for our speckling. Now, I'm gonna to wanna to use the most of the true black speckles. They're gonna have some very small hints of emerald green or saffron spice. So, I am going to come in and take, that is a reasonable cover of a knife of the true black. But there's still way more citric acid than black acid dye in here. And the reason for that kind of ratio is that it means that if I add too much powder, I'm not gonna add a lot of dye. So this will make it harder for me to over apply the dye. And so with the green, I'm just going for a tiny amount. So it should be very diluted. And then same with the orange, just a tiny bit. Cause I can always add more dye, but you can't take it away. So when you want your speckles to be fairly subtle, a less is more approach is a good one to have. And I don't know if you can see that there's some larger clumps of dye. We wanna make sure to break those up as much as we can. But so this means that I'm gonna be able to add greater volumes of these dyes. This isn't gonna dilute the color of the speckle. What this will do is it's gonna spread out those speckles. As we set up my countertop, I have set up two steamer baskets. So that is ready to go as soon as we are. And I am taking the yarn and I'm not trying to spread it out very much yet, but I am laying it sort of ordered across the surface. And I'm gonna do this, I will spread them out more, but I'm doing this for all six skeins, just making sure that they're not twisted, which actually, I kind of wonder why I don't bother twisting them. Because, huh, if I want like reasonable coverage, like twisting isn't necessarily bad, but at the same time, I suppose dyeing a sweater's quantity of yarn is not necessarily the time 
to try something completely brand new. And so what I'm doing now is I'm sort of scrunching and spreading. This means that if I had the skeins just completely straight like that, uh, that we would, it would be harder for us to get uh, coverage below the first layer. But so this may let some of the yarn with it being a little more scrunched up, this will let some of the dye go beneath. Uh, and some of it may fall into some of those layers down below. Now, I don't think the entire six skeins are currently on camera, uh, but hopefully you can get a little bit of a sense. Okay, I'm gonna start actually with the green because I think that this is the one that is the most dilute. And I am going across all six skeins. And at first, I cannot see much at all. <laughs> it's going to take a minute, especially because there's not a lot of liquid in here, for that dye to sink in. So while we wait, I'm going to come in with the orange and do something similar. And just sort of do one pass and let it sit. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to see, see it come. It's very subtle. Now, <laughs> don't worry, I'll zoom in. We're gonna let things sit for a little bit, but while we're at it, let's go ahead and go in between and do a similar kind of layer with some true black. And I've definitely mixed up way, way, way too much dye. Um, but it's nice to have more than you need. So I'm gonna give this, I think, about five minutes to let the dye sort of soak in. Uh, but let me uh, wash my hands and zoom you in. So immediately, and forgive the white balance, uh, you can see those black speckles and how they are tiny and sort of grouped a little bit from where I put it. Now, if I look over to the green, you can still see it using a similar amount of powder, similar amount of powder. There's just a, they're fewer and further between. And similarly with the orange, they are less dense, but the colors are less dense overall as well. I know I said I was gonna wait five minutes, but uh, I think that you can actually start to see it. I mean, you pretty much only see the black here. The green and the orange are a lot, lot more subtle. I don't want to add all the colors all over. And I don't want to add them all in straight lines because I would like the speckles to be a little bit non-pooling. So I am coming with the black at sort of this V, V shape. I'm also starting to do, rather than a line, some just spots of it to make it be a little bit more random. And the yarn being scrunched up will help with that as well. It is hard when you're doing something like this and you can't uh, see the speckles show up very quickly uh, to know how much to do. But so now I'm coming in with the green and just doing some little bits. Same with the orange. Making sure to get sort of a little bit but a similar amount on each skein, approximately. Because I don't want too much. I do want to put a little bit of some green down at that end. 
and maybe a tiny bit more black. All right. But now I'm going to actually let this sit for 10 minutes before we flip it. Okay, now I need to flip the yarn carefully, flipping it and trying. What I'm trying to do as I flip these is not rub them on the bottom a ton because that could cause some spread. We likely have some amount of color that has struck already, but some maybe not. And we're going to continue to add some speckles, but I do like to wait uh, before I flip because if I give it some time, then it's much more likely that all of the dye is saturated before we move things around. But now I am going to speed things up and we're gonna speckle the rest of the yarn. I applied the dye even lighter this time around. I am not focused on there being some of each color on every single round, but I do want to feel some amount of balance on these skeins. When I was knitting my own Comfort Fade Cardi, and I don't think I have the vlog for that out yet. I still need to do voiceovers and edit that. But when I was working on that sweater, I noticed that some yarn, some of the yarn had speckles that were more concentrated in part of the skein and the other. And I still really enjoyed the overall effects that it had on the sweater. So I'm not obsessing over placement, which I think is a really big thing for me. Because a lot of times I might then add more and more and more when I'm trying to keep things a bit lighter overall here. I did try to add approximately the same amount of powder to each of the skeins, but it's not in the same placement. There is variation in there intentionally because I know that there's gonna be variation between them and I don't want these speckles to be perfect repeating. I want them to feel sort of random as uh, as they appear on the finished garment. After winning 10 minutes, I did flip the yarn a third time, this time opening up the interior of the skein. I don't mind there being large yellow patches without color. That is something that is really okay. But I do want to uh, make sure that there we do have some speckles in there as well, just because especially with fingering weight yarn, there are so many different strands that some of them definitely didn't get some speckles on them yet from the countertop already. One thing I didn't comment on yet was how fairly even this yellow color feels. And that we can attribute to the cool that technique. Um, I can say that in person there are tonal variation in the yellow. There are some that lean a little more butter and some that are a little more intense. So that will add to some lovely variation in the garment as well. But I think that with yellow, it can be a lot harder to tell what is contrast within the color versus shifts of the light in the room. So it is a very subtle, I would call this a more of a semi-solid just because those differences are subtle. And I think that these speckles are sort of adding to it and amplifying, well, I guess they're not amplifying the differences in the yellow, but it is adding just some fun color onto the yarn. All right, I am satisfied. So I'm now going to take three skeins at a time and go place them inside a steamer basket on my stove top. Now my steamer baskets are two different sizes, which hopefully won't introduce any color spread, but we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna go put this in as well. Now we do have the majority of our dye powder uh, left. We did not use very much at all. So at this stage, I have a few choices. 
I could put these into some sealed containers to save for a later date, or I could use them right now for a leave no die behind. And I actually think that I am going to store them today. I actually have a video idea that would work really, really well with these three colors, but uh, I don't have time to do it today. And so I am stacking the cups, sorry for the sound, putting on some tin foil, and then I am going to place this inside a Ziploc container to store it until I'm ready to use it. And in the meantime, the yarn is going to steam set for 30 minutes in these steamer baskets. The 30 minutes are up. Ooh. So now I'm gonna let the yarn cool completely so we can wash it. And so we do have some amount of spread, um, but not like a ton, and ooh, I'm really excited. All right, so we'll be back once things are cool to wash the yarn. Let's wash the yarn. I'm not expecting to see any bleeding, because this is three of the stains. I'll wash the other three off camera, but six can be a little unwieldy in one of these little buckets which I really only use for filming purposes. I think if I were washing the yarn, uh, not trying to film and show if there's bleeding or not, then I might use the five gallon bucket. Let's see. Yeah, we are seeing no bleeding, which is wonderful. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out all of the soap Put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Reseda, this is so cool. I am so excited with how this beautiful yellow yarn with some really subtle speckles has turned out. The black and green speckles definitely stand out the most. I think that the orange are a lot more subtle. Like here, and here are some of the orange. I think because, and yellow, it's so hard to photograph. Because the yellow is so similar to orange, there's not as much contrast as there is with the green and the black. Also, I do think there was one point where I was speckling where I grabbed the green and when I thought I had the black. So I found it actually a little hard when it was mixed with powder to tell the difference between the green and the black which is a little bit surprising, to be honest. But I am happy with how, with the sharpness of the speckles and how I didn't use my too much jean and I left a lot of space without speckles behind as well. Because I think that when you have some of these longer stretches without speckles, it'll help things feel a little bit more randomly placed. At least that's sort of what I'm hoping for. It was an element I really enjoyed when I was making my own sweater, which yes, the vlog probably still isn't up. It keeps getting pushed back on the schedule. But there will be a vlog sometime in 2021 of the first sweater I've knit for myself in probably eight plus years. I only needed to dye five skeins for this project, but I did dye six. And that was because I figured maybe that there's one that would stand out as feeling a tiny bit different from the rest. I wasn't sure if that would be the case, but it is. There was one skein where I had this little bit of a darker black, more splotch, less speckled feel. I think I just added the dye a tiny bit heavy in this one section. And so this is gonna be the one that I leave out um, because I think that the other ones are more closely matched. Which goes to show, I think if I'm gonna dye a sweater for myself, I will dye up a few extra skeins in case, I mean, with well, with hand dyed yarn, there is gonna be variation, but that way I can choose to, okay, which five or however many I would need, which, how, which skeins fit the best together, uh, and then that's a decision I can make. Plus, you never know when you might get to the end of the project and decide you wanna make something longer and not have enough yarn. So, 
always plan for more yarn than you think you might need. Vriseta, thank you so much for being my lab partner for this video. I really, really hope that you will enjoy this yellow speckled yarn and that you're gonna have so much fun making a sweater out of it. Uh, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out, and so I really, really hope you love it too. Thank you again for being my lab partner. Speckling for this project actually inspired a little bit what I wanted to do for the August 2021 Chemnitz Dialogue, where I was looking at pictures of books and I really wanted to play with soft speckles on a fairly uh, semi-solid base and so it was really really fun to go for something like that again and not go too heavy. I mean I love heavy speckles. I love 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 layering and layering colors and adding more and more and more and more but it's nice to show that I can myself that I can do some restraint and still absolutely really like how it has turned out. So that was a lot of fun. Please make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I post videos at least twice a week, and as I mentioned, I have a monthly dialogue live stream at least once a month where I will die yarn live, uh, where you can interact with me in real time, and sometimes these come up pretty last minute, so you really don't want to miss it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching!